Good night, good morning, good evening, wherever you are in divine consciousness. Hello, beautiful souls, and welcome to the Living in Joy Now podcast with me, Yai Joyce, your host, where we have weekly conversations about mind, body, soul, and spirit, all things so that you can live your life of divine joy. If you don't know who I am, I am Yai Joyce to some... And I am a holistic herbalist, a spiritual life, wellness, and business coach. I am a transformational coach and counselor where people come, where they are ready to live a life of divine joy, release the trauma, release the drama of their past, and so that they can walk powerfully in their future and become wealthy and well-rested. I do that through a lot of different coaching modalities and counseling modalities. If you, it's an infusion of mind, body, and soul. So if you would like to find out more about me and my divine work powered by the ancestors, you can go to yayjoyce.com. That's Y-A-Y-I-J-O-Y-C-E.com. And this episode is being brought to you by the Hoodoo Healing Community of Patreon. I would love to thank the Patreon subscribers and supporters. It is because of them that I can make these weekly broadcast. So let us get into it for this week. So the spiritual energy of this week, uh, we have so much going on, so much going on in the atmosphere, so much going on in the atmosphere. We're still in uh, plenty of planets are in plenty. There are plenty of planets in retro shade. Uh, Pluto had turned direct as well as Saturn has uh, turned turned direct. We're coming off of a powerful uh, new moon. That energy is still vibing high for the next uh, 21 days or so. We're here in the 1010 portal, which is just the beginning. And one of the most beautiful things about the 1010 portal is that it reminds us that we can tap into this energy anytime. You can begin again at any time in your life. You don't have to wait for these portals. You don't have to wait for this energy. You can begin again any day, time, and or place if it's so fit in your divine consciousness to do so. Okay, so Saturn turning direct on 1010 is here to provide us a mental boost, right? A nice mental boost in our mind. Um, Mercury is the planet of mind and encompasses, as is in retrograde learning uh, for our past mistakes teaching ourselves new ways of having growth mindset and being able to communicate more. Chiron rules the educational theme of mentoring. So Chiron and uh, getting the help that you need. So Chiron is saying, hey, get the mentoring that you need. Get the education that you need on your divine problems, right? So Saturn is adding this discipline. It's saying, listen, uh, go to the professional. If you are having an issue in an area, you go to that set professional. Your friends and family are not set professionals. Even if they are said professionals in that area, during this three-week time that we are retrograding and retro shading and really requiring people to work on their mental status. So if you had any kind of, you know, breakdowns or any type of, you know, communication issues, if you had any of this going on, 
it is just letting you know these are areas in your life that you really need to work on. So things that are mishapping during this time are just showing you areas and themes of your life that continue to need a little work. And so even though it's really convenient to ask our friends and family for help and advice, even if they are set professionals in that area, it's not advisable, right? Let family stay family and let friends stay friends. And friends are family too, but let them stay in that role, right? They don't need to be helping you in certain things. And if they are helping you in certain things, then you step out of that friend role, out of that family role, and pay them and treat them like you were a customer going to a business, okay? Like you're a customer going to a business. So remember Saturn as that discipline and... Saturn is saying, be disciplined, okay? And be disciplined with, because we sometimes are not disciplined in that aspect. It is so much easier to pick up the phone and to call and to dump on your friend than it is to call your coach, your counselor, or your therapist, right? Or wait till those sessions. And what that is, is that discipline is also that we have to learn how to self-regulate our own emotions. This is why I teach my clients uh, about self-coaching. When they come to me, it's about them coaching themselves, that you are eventually coaching yourself, that you are to be able to be your own coach that you're to be your own counselor and your own cheerleader. You have a ori, you have a higher self, you have a mind and you also have a brain. The mind and the brain are two separate things, but you have all of these tools. But what is so convenient for people is to dump their problems on someone else and feel better about it, okay? Or have someone else give them the advice. What happens a lot of times is that that requires a, the counselor or that person to be a crutch. So one of the things that as I've grown as a coach, I still do this right now for cert for, uh, I still have this service right now, but it is definitely going away is check-ins. Uh, and I did a powerful training. I did a powerful training and about self-coaching and teaching your clients to self-coach more. And one of the a therapists was saying his one of his clients was so leaning on the check-ins, and he's like, "So what? So what if something goes wrong? And uh, that means what am I to do?" And he was like, "You are to consult yourself. Go over your notes. Go over your things. Use the tools that you have. You eventually are going to have to do the work yourself, right? You are going to have to do the work yourself." And he, that made him panic, and. He's like, no, I can't do that. And he wanted to go to someone where he can just not really heal, but emotionally dump on, right? And so what this idea is, there is no check-ins with in between sessions. It is you have tools, learn how to use your tools and regulate yourself. And People need to learn how to become reliant on themselves. If you have a strong enough mental capacity, you can do it. You you can do it. Now, we're not talking about people that have certain types of mental illnesses will not be able to do that. But for um, normal anxiety uh, certain types of depression, certain types of things. Remember, again, this can be applied to different things. I'm not diagnosing. I'm not treating. You know, talk to your 
said coach, counselor, or professional about you learning self-coaching techniques for yourself. But I, I do a lot. I do a lot of self-coaching with my clients. I give them the materials here. Here it is and work it out. Right. And I give them tools and I give them the space, but they have to learn how to work things out themselves. Uh, a lot of times people you got in this life and this not yourself and you getting out of it yourself with just guidance and a little support, but not the person doing the work for you. So Saturn is telling us to be that, to be mature, to be responsible, to make good use of our time. It is saying that we need to learn how to be control over our emotions. And um, something that I'm going to talk about next week that Saturn, another lesson of Saturn, I just don't want to make this episode too long, is that Saturn is asking us to have a strong sense of purpose in ourselves. Because when we have a strong sense of purpose in ourselves, that protects us against loneliness. And, you know, seasonal sad disorder, that is something that is very real. But Saturn is saying that if we have a strong sense of purpose within ourselves, that protects us from the loneliness and people shacking up with, you know, um, what do they call it? Cuffing season. And, and being with people that they know that they don't need to be with during this season because of the, you know, the said, quote unquote, loneliness or dealing with seasonal affective disorder or sad or any of those things. So we're going to be talking about Saturn's message in that, right? And we tend to think of our emotions as... um you know, as a bad thing a lot of times in Western society, but our emotions are a good thing. Emotions derive from situations. Generally, the type of situation will elicit this, the same type of emotional response. Okay. So for example, if you lose something, that is grief, right? If you gain more money, or you gain, um, you know, you get something that makes you happy. If you lose something unexpectedly that you weren't expecting to lose, that brings up fear or scary in some kind of way, right? And so we feel concern about certain things. And emotions arise a lot of times from particular goals motivations or concerns or worries. And we, Saturn moving and the spiritual energy moving is asking us all as humanity, worry over concern. We have been told so much about the fight and flight and our ancestors being so fearful of the woolly mammoth, the lion, tigers, and bears. Oh my. But every ancestor was not running around being afraid, okay? And some people lean on this fight or flight. Some people really lean on, oh, it's my trauma. And, you know, again, just really lean on that as a crutch. Some people use their traumatic childhood, their trauma, as a crutch of not to get better. And this energy saying, are you being mature? There's a difference in leaning on it as a crutch and going over it over and over again, and then being concerned. You're concerned about what happened to you in your past. And your concerns make you strive and work towards having particular goals and motivations to evolve to be a better person, okay? So concern over worry, right? Concern over worry. It's okay to have concerns. Our ancestors had concerns about the animals and concerns about certain things, but they weren't worried about every little thing. 
They weren't running from every little thing. If that's the case, then the human species would not have survived. There had to be some ancestors that sat down with the sensibility of concerned over worry, okay? And so this energy is saying, come on, we cannot continue to buy into every... I mean, they sell so much stuff off of people being overly concerned and overly concerned about their past. There's a certain amount of concern about your past, but it really doesn't shape who you are today. It does not. That's a falsality that we tell ourselves. Nothing shapes your mind but you. Those things can happen to you, but you have a choice to allow them to affect you. Maturity, getting over things, personal motivation, goals, concerns versus worries. Okay. And whatever seems real to us elicits emotional response. And so whatever has been eliciting uh, emotional response in you over the last couple of months, you should take note of that because whatever is eliciting this emotional response in you is telling you that that's real for you. That's a real thing for you. So you can't write that off. It's real and you need to work on that. So if you have feelings of not enough or you're not going to have enough and that really elicits this emotional response in you, that's real to you. And so you need to deal with your poverty consciousness or your lack consciousness or whatever it is for you. It can be something totally different, right? Or abandonment consciousness where there's, there's so many different states of consciousness that people can have for that never enough feeling, right? In, in other words, how we appraise or interpret a situation governs the emotions we feel, right? The reason why certain movies, uh, books, plays, uh, podcasts, or certain people just don't engage with you emotionally is because in some sense, shape, or form, you, you can't see any truth in what they're saying. You don't detect any truth in what they're saying. So it really doesn't vibe with you because it's not real to you, right? So it's difficult to get emotional about things that aren't obvious right in front of us. So for example, you know, grief may not strike you when you told that you're, you're, you lost your job. But once it becomes real to us in some way, say Thursday rolls around and that paycheck doesn't come in your bank and you, and you go and check your bank account, you forget, oh shoot, I don't even work there no more. Right. I don't have a job. Right. Then that grief hits you like, whew, because now it has become real. And so Saturn is asking us which of your emotions that are, that you have, that are unhealthy emotions and feelings, they're all serve a purpose, but what, what are those that are, you're operating from in a really unhealthy manner because you keep making them overly real. And this energy is letting us know that there are certain circumstances that we can never become accustomed to. It is impossible. Listen to me. I don't care what books they sell, what these gurus out here are telling you. I'm telling you this is snapplefacts.com. It is impossible to escape negative feelings like fear or or anxiety. In Western society, they have made fear and anxiety a bad thing where fear and anxiety uh, and certain things are here to protect you and to befriend, and you are to befriend those things. And positive emotions will always fade over time. 
Emotions and feelings will always be in, in flux. You That's why you have to be in control over your mind and be like, okay, that's here's a particular feeling. Here's a particular emotion. Allowing it to flow on the cloud. Let it go and let it come. No matter how much you are in love, that don't mean that love is going to last forever. We need to stop living in a fantasy. No matter if you win the, that money or you get that job, okay? Guess what? That positive feeling in that instant moment is not going to last. That new relationship feeling doesn't last. None of these feelings last, but people keep chasing a high of it lasting forever. That is not realistic. Positive emotions like pleasure always slip away. Always. You cannot live on earth and be positive 365 days of the year, 24 hours a day. Impossible. You can have joy through it all. You can have joy through it all. So it is also saying, telling us, stop with this time heals all wounds. Bull crap. Time doesn't heal all wounds. And if it does, it only does so indirectly. Events retain emotional power over the years. And the emotional power can become less and less and less unless we re-experience them and re-evaluate them. It's re-experiencing things that reduce the emotional charge of the event. It's supposed to reduce the emotional charge of the event. If you are a healthy human being, mentally, in the mind. But some people allow it to take over their life. Like breakups is not a thing. Like losing a job is not a thing. Like gaining weight, going up and down is not a thing. This is earth. And so Saturn is like, yo, this is earth. Mature up or you are going to be crying for the rest of your long days here. For real. You, you you are just going to be crying for the rest of your long days. I This message is not for everybody. This is not for the coddler who wants somebody to hold their hand and be like, oh, what was me? Oh my gosh, the angels, the ancestors are coming to lift me up. No, mature up. Mature up in your emotions. Mature up in your dating. Mature up in your finances. Mature up in your life. Saturn is asking all of us to mature up. What area? Mature up in your parenting. Mature up in building your wealth. Maturity. Why are we letting things take such emotional charge over our life? He left. She left. It hurts right now. It it will not hurt forever. What had happened was you don't re-experience it. You don't reevaluate it. You try to either push the pain away with emotional eating, drugs, emotional shopping, or whatever it is. So because you don't reevaluate failing that test, you don't reevaluate um, being rejected by a lover that was a blessing in disguise. You don't reevaluate losing that relationship and not reevaluating it in a healthy manner is why these things retain power over you across decades. And Saturn's like, really just think about, like, I know common sense isn't common. I, I Trust me, as a coach and a counselor, Trust me, I I see it. Common sense is not common. But Saturn is like, okay, so what you are telling me and God and the universe and your angels and your ancestors are that you are allowing something to hold you bondage for a decade. Okay, a decade. Okay, and you want us to do what with this? A decade of complaints that you have. Okay, continue to listen and lift you up and take you where? You're an emotional wreck. You need to redefine, reevaluate the situation 
so these things can stop retaining emotional power over your life. So he left 10 years ago and it's still emotional power over you. Okay. We're not judging, but um, we, I, we don't know what you want us to do here. We've sent other good people in your life. We've given you good things to look at over this last decade, but obviously it's none of it's good enough. You still want that person. Uh, guess what? He's an alcoholic or he's a drug addict or whatever it is, or he's just, you know, or he's moved on with his life and having a good life and you've moved on with your life and having a good life. Okay. And Saturn is like the law of closure. It is time to close some things. This is this this energy is like for real, y'all. Please, please, please. We're in a pandemic. We're in an epidemic. We have so many things going on. This is the this is the universe right now. We have so many things going on. Can you please? Can you please close out that divorce? Can you please close out that breakup? Can you please close out the little girl that rolled her eyes at you in the fifth grade? Can you please close it out? Can you, can, can you, can you, um, we have things over here. We're not saying that what you, what your emotions are not important, but that yes, they're so important. Yes. 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 They are important. Lucy. Yes. 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 But, um, Lucy, we have been listening to this for 10 years. Can we put some closure on this? Okay. All right now. And that is what Saturn is saying. Um, can we put some closure on it? And the way we tend to respond to our emotions tend to be absolute. They often lend immediately to actions of one kind or another. And a lot of times we have action with no reevaluation, no real discussion, no accountability. We allow emotions to seize us and send us down a path. And then later, then we allow a different emotion to send us down the opposite path. We allow these things to dictate us and our paths. And the emotion can't even go to the bank, y'all. The emotion can't go to the bank and make a deposit. I'll be damned if I'm letting something that cannot make no goddamn deposit in the bank account for me to dictate, uh-uh, nah, that thing can't pay your rent. Hey, um, lying emotion um, that over my breakup a decade ago, uh, do you have $1,500 to pay my rent this month um, while I sit and soak? Oh, no? Okay. Yeah, the universe is like, um, these things cannot help you. And then when we're dealing with the consequences of them, then we want to say, oh, God. Oh, ancestors, why me? And they say that we, sometimes people do, sometimes people naturally consider the consequences that, of their emotions and modify them accordingly. But angry people get violent, you know? But generally, hopefully speaking, people refrain from shooting and stabbing at each other, you know? and um, running each o over each other with their cars willy-nilly, hopefully. But again, we still shout. We still hit, there are people that hit their heads on the walls. There's people that are still going and, uh, you know, eating uncontrollably, sitting silently, having envy and jealousy. Emotions may absolutely, Saturn is here to tell us about maturity. And as maturity, emotions may absolutely dictate a type of response. But you as the human, you as the power, the creator, the controller of your life, you modulate the size of that response. Sugar pie, honey bunches of oats, snap, crackle, and pop, baby cakes, you. You, 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 sugar foots. You, 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 you. You modulate the size of the response. You. You. Usually, that's what's supposed to have happened, but people allow the emotion uh, the emotion to dictate to dictate the response. 
So in all, Saturn is like, um, we're not listening. Uh, we have other things to do. We're, we're consoling people. We're losing hundreds of people a day. We are, yes, yes. The breakup from um, um, sixth grade. Okay. All right. Okay. They just lost their mom. All right. The breakup from sixth grade. Okay. He cheated on you. All right. But you left that relationship unscathed with disease. All right. So yeah. Can we get a hoot hoot and a holla holler? And can we just ease on down the road over here? Okay. Yes. 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 That is like, let's go over here and be mature human beings. Can we do that? Right. So that is what Saturn is asking of us. Maturity. Where do you need to be mature? Where do you need to gain control over your emotions? The emotional impact of an event, a situation on earth school. This is earth school, y'all. Earth school. School, 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 right? And I keep trying to figure out, like, what was on my biscuit and butter that I was like, I'm coming here to help, <laughs> Oh, what's all my biscuit and butter? <laughs> right. The emotional impact of events and situation in earth school depends on our interpretation. Take time to interpret events correctly. Let friends and family stay in the friends and family position. Be mature and get the help that you need in whatever area of your life. Don't be having daddy out there built the thing because he got nails and a nail gun. Go pay the professional to build it. Okay. This energy is saying pay people, leave your family and friends in the family and friends position. Learn to have a great emotional impact by putting a different spin on situations. Learn to spin your head around. You know, like the poltergeist when you spin it around that way, spin it around the other way on situations can change the feeling. The law of the universe, the spiritual laws are asking us to lighten the load. Lighten the load. Lighten the load of emotionally dumping on people. Lighten the load. Learn to self-coach. Learn to motivate yourself. Learn to reinterpret situations. Learn to reduce your negative emotions and response. Learn to modulate the size of your response. Reinterpret situations that have caused you grief for a positive emotional gain. We can use grief. You know, grief attracts help right? And fear may stop us from attempting things. However, however, we are in control. You can modulate the size of your response. You can leave and lead an emotionally intelligent, mature, and responsible life. Take this time to evaluate the structure of your life, your maturity, and your emotions clearly and objectively. And if you don't know how to do that, get you a mentor, coach, and a counselor to help you to structure, to release and repair and reshape so that you can expand your life to a life of joy so that you can live in joy now. I pray that this podcast has blessed you and filled your life with divine joy and grace. If you need me, you know where to find me, yayjoyce.com, Y-A-Y-I-J-O-Y-C-E.com, Yayi Joyce on Instagram, X Yayi Joyce on the Twitter, and to order your holistic herbs and roots, hoodoohealing.com net. Have a blessed and bountiful week, all. Live and joy.